This year we challenged university teams to make a Thor's hammer and to define what they meant by a Thor's hammer. We have a wide range of designs and some really beautiful submitted hammers and we're about to put them through really rigorous tests. Looking at the durability of the hammer, the capability of the hammer's head, at the end, if we have a number of hammers that are spectacular in their performance, it'll come down to how comfortable the hammer was, how well the hammer worked as a hammer, and how beautiful it was. Georgia Southern, four pounds, 14 ounces, 14 and three quarters inches, a really unique hollow design. Here's Georgia Southern University. And yeah, one of the things- Georgia Southern University also. Oh, uh, there, there's part of, yep. <laughs> Pretty gutsy design, you know, I think. Um, this felt good in my hand. Yeah, the weight on here is really fun. And well. And I, I love the, the leather work that's, that's down here. I mean, this, you, the stitching sticks out a little bit, but if you put it the right way around, it feels great. The retention is, is lovely. And the, the casting in here is really cool. It did, however, let go in a bunch of places up here. So this is, I think, a combination of uh, perhaps ductile or, uh, and steel for the faces, which is, again, ductile is a pretty, pretty durable material, but it just, in this case, it's just this, the uh, dimensional uh, lat lattice wasn't up, up to snuff, I think. I yeah, think uh, yeah. You know, beefier it would have been good. We gave this one the award for most intricate casting, and uh, it just could have used a little more uh, strengthening. Yeah, I think, a little to, beefier to in it. the lattice, and yeah. that's, that's beautiful. Arts at Metier, five pounds, two ounces, 11 and a half inches. Really interesting, simple design for a hammer using the casting process. It's an interesting looking hammer, <laughs> to say right. the least. Uh, you got a little bit of face angle, is a little bit off. You kind of, if you're swinging this, it's either wants to be dead, perpendicular, or parallel with the handle, or a little bit the opposite direction of the way it is. Um, and, it, and with this, the other interesting thing, I mean, it's a forward-reaching design, I guess, we, but we've got most of the mass of this, this, about half of it almost, down here in the handle, which does no good to the, the utilization of this. So it's, it's kind of cool handle, but um, it doesn't, doesn't lend itself to the work. It's, it's an interesting design. I could see it, it looks like a Viking Age pommel on a sword, you know, if it was, if it was that way and a lot right, smaller. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, I think that the, there's a bit of a misallocation of steel. It's just too much in the handle. The, the faces are a little small, too. When we were driving the, uh, the railroad spikes, you had to be very, very accurate with this because it has such a small face. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, a lot of the, the steel here on the faces held up fine. I don't see much, yeah. much problem beyond what was already there. Good casting, interesting design, love it, but there you are. The first thing we're going to do to your hammers today is drive some railroad spikes into an oak log. We check the, the face of the hammer afterwards and we check the feel of the hammer. This is a really important test because a hammer isn't just a thing that exists by itself. It's a tool and it should be usable as a tool, even though Thor's hammer was more of a weapon. But you know, that's splitting hairs. We also looked to see how deeply these go in and how the hammer felt in our hands, how much it tore up our elbows or shoulders or any of those things. It really gave us an intimate knowledge of the feel and weight and balance of the hammers. Let's get started. St. Martin's University, five pounds, 12 ounces, 15 inches. Even before we swung this thing, we, we decided that, uh, and prophetically so, decided that we wanted to give this one the award of most likely to explode. And it did. It did. <laughs> you can see what happened to it. Uh, the 
at all of the fracture points, we see some uh, center line shrink. There's a darkness here, which shows that there's probably was a crack already here. Uh, this is probably where this whole failure started, um, and then it, it just grew from there. I mean, from what I from what I know of metallurgy, this is real fine grain. I mean, it, it looks is. like it's strongly made, um, but there are those center line cracks and some shrinkage that uh, caused an inherent weakness. But I mean, while I was still swinging, this was a fun hammer to swing. I mean, this was really cool. It was it was light. It was fast. It was it was just a good time, and uh, it's just a shame it blew up. Iowa State University, five pounds, 11 ounces, 11 inches long. The shiniest meat tenderizer I've ever seen. <laughs> it did some justice on the concrete, that's for sure. Um, some, some of these nubs aren't as tall as the other ones, so maybe that's a casting issue. I don't think it was from driving the railroad no, spike, because no, I think we drove like on the target side. My biggest issue with this hammer is the handle. That's a really spindly little handle. You know, I, I can, it's, it's too small. I, I can't really control the head with a, with a handle this small. But, uh, you know, the casting is great. Amazing. I mean, a, a approaching, approaching flawless. And there's tiny little pick, pock marks here and there. Oh, no, no, that's a, wait a minute. That's a lightning bolt. All right, so yeah, I mean, the details on this, even down to this little spear point on here, they're just neat. It's, it's a cool little ham hammer. Just for me, that little handle is just too small. Kent State University, four pounds, 11 ounces, 13 and a half inches. That looks like something I can go down to Home Depot and pick up. It's got a very classic sledgehammer head uh, with the addition of these fun parts. So yeah, that's, that's kind of yep. Um, and the little beard that comes down, that's kind of fun I do too. like that. Yeah, it's got yeah. some different design lines on this plane too. Mm -hmm. Kind of sways, splays out. The, the cast is flawless. I don't see any any kind of issue with the cast. I don't see any porosity of, to speak of. I mean, little tiny bits, but. Um, and the head, and they 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 took a beating and take they took it. Yeah, yeah. The head where it hit the spike, a little it's, bit. It's color. I mean, you run your finger over there. I don't. No. Nope. Feel anything. Yeah, games, you're right. You know? you're so right. It's more like that the spike left its mark on the hammer, and, and that's <laughs> as it was giving up. But uh, and and the concrete chop. You know, the the concrete stuck to the head, but it didn't mar it up at all. And it was a comfortable hammer to swing. I mean, it, Very. it it's just the right length. You know, it, my only. Little issue is that if I put this strap on, it locks me in in a way that I, it kind of scares me. I'd rather have a little bit bigger strap or something. Or reverse could, it. Or yeah, or have it dangling from the bottom or something. But uh, in, in all, you know, a well-cast hammer, and it's a, a very useful hammer. I mean, I'd, I'd take this home and use it. Yeah, me too. So Ben, I was really delighted you were able to test this hammer. This hammer is really special to me. Of course, I made it, so that makes it special anyway. <laughs> sure, yeah. But um, starting 15 years ago, we started working with a young guy in the Army that was doing his PhD, and he developed a brand new lightweight steel alloy. It's 30% manganese, 10% aluminum, but it's got the properties of an alloy steel, so it's much lighter. Huh. So when we started doing this uh, uh, Thor's hammer competition, I knew that the challenge would be making something that looks like Thor's hammer that was lightweight enough. Okay. So I wanted to design a hammer that used that special alloy. Spokane Steel, one of our members out in Spokane, is the most capable. They've been making most of the test articles for the Army, including lightweight things like lightweight track. And so they're really capable and they have an investment casting operation. So I designed this to be hollow, so it's got quarter inch walls and then it's got a, a handle um, flange here and then the top is open so you can get things out of it. And behind the faces is an X. Huh. Now this alloy is 15% lighter than steel. The walls are about a quarter of an inch and the X behind really makes the faces relatively strong. It's an austenitic material like an austenitic stainless steel so 
because of really hard and very well heat treatment, but it worked hard. And so I actually pounded the faces to try and get them hard before I finished nice. grinding them. And so I think it really polished up well. And I know that you evaluated it, so I wondered if you could comment a, a little bit on how the hammer functioned and whether or not it performed. Yeah, I mean, when I picked it up, I had no idea that it was that thick inside. I mean, it really, for its size and shape, it, it really is light. I mean, I, I would have figured it, these were like 10 gauge walls, not quarter inch walls, you know? And it's, uh, it swung great and uh, it was fun. I mean, it, there's not much in the way of marring on either of the faces. There's not much damage on this stuff. I mean, I, I signed it and put super steel on it because this stuff is really, really interesting and, and cool. Um, I love the design of this. It's a super simple design, but it's it's very functional. This was cast, this, you had someone cast this for you? Yeah, this is Spokane Steel cast it in the investment casting process. They took a solid model that Alex, my son, put together for me, and he actually did the mechanical evaluation. So I talked to the FEF students about it, and he did the modeling to make sure that it would perform well and actually finished it for me. So he really put together the solid model, which they could directly use to make the wax to make the investment cast. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal and it's exciting steel. And I, I love that this steel is, is protecting our men and women overseas and, you know, or will be, or I don't know when it's, when the rollout is or what, but it's, it's, an, it's I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy this kind of research is going on. I'm, I'm, love that this kind of steel exists. It's, it's really cool, I love, I love this hammer. Thank you. Texas State University, five pounds, 12 ounces, 14 inches. The, the most impressive thing about this is going through the block on both sides, these points could have easily rounded, flattened, whatever, and they are just about as pristine as they were before they got used on all these torturous tests we put it through. Yeah, yeah, we drove railroad spikes with this side, and you know, I'm sure we hit some of these points at some point. Oh yeah, you could see it in the railroad spikes after yeah. you were done. Yep, but uh, but yeah, th these points are you know pristine. They look just like they did when they were made. Clean design. Uh, yep, and this one as well. Yeah, super cool, cl clean casting. Beautiful size for a hammer handle, uh, and it held up really well. Good choice, hickory for a handle. I mean, that's classic. Was a bit of a departure from a Thor's hammer, having all the spikes everywhere. So that kind of played into it a little bit, you know, from an aesthetic standpoint. But we uh, we we called this one the <laughs> must-have zombie apocalypse hammer, hammer. <laughs> because you can drive a nail with it, and you can crush a skull with it. So. It's got all the Multi features. Multi-use, a thousand and one. <laughs> exactly. You just can't swing it all day because it's almost six pounds. <laughs>